Hey friends, today I wanted to look at this little module here called Surveillance. And uh, it's an old module, but a goodie, I think. And um, there are other modules that do this. It's basically just a knob. It's just a knob. Uh, there's other modules like from Vault. There's uh, knobs, which does a very similar thing. It's just got less outputs, although, of course, you know, as I have here, I've got multiple cables plugged into individual outputs, so it's not really a big deal. We are in the digital domain after all, not in hardware. So anyway, the reason why I want to talk about it is because I think that this is a pretty cool thing that you can do in modular. And uh, I mean, you can do it in like Ableton and stuff as well, but not to this degree, I don't think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But basically what I've got it set up as is just one big macro control to control this whole patch. And the reason why you might want to do this is for things like live performance, um, other things as well. Uh, I keep forgetting I have a little camera now, so hello up there. But um, let's play this and we can do a, a really big epic crossfade between different parameters. And you can hear what I mean. So let's just uh, play this. Just turn it down slightly, a little bit heavy there. So if I swing this knob around to the other side, we're gonna dramatically change what we're listening to. So let's do that. So it's completely changed the sound. It's an entirely new patch now. And all I'm doing is modifying CV parameters. And uh, let's turn it down a bit again. So there's a lot going on here. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail, but you know, I've got these wavetable oscillators. They're being uh, the, the morph on the wavetable is being modulated on all of them. The decay on this perk wall, which they're all going into, is being uh, modulated as well. So is this filter using a sample and hold, which only fades in uh, depending on which side of this knob I'm on. And you can see all of these parameters changing all over the patch whenever I swing back and forth. I'm also modulating the uh, these two Euclidean sequences, the the steps and uh, hits, or well, the length and the hips hits are being modulated, as is the the shift. Um, so there's there's a lot happening, um, and with the drum kit, like it's going from it's playing the same sequence, but. The sounds are being so heavily changed, and a lot of that's because of what's happening with Debriatus here, and also what's happening with the filter. Um, so yeah, and there's a lot of cross-fading that's happening, like I've got a lot of fades, so I can fade between two different sequences. Um, so yeah, like, outside of, I mean look, there's a lot of sound design potential here for using this in heaps of different ways to get interesting uh, blends between two different textures. But in a live performance environment, you can use this to shift between entirely different, like, patch changes, basically. Um, or song changes, even. Uh, I don't know how <laughs> applicable it would be all the time. Like, I don't know how many people use VCV for live performance. I know that it people definitely do. But as with hardware modular, I always think that that is a little bit tricky just because you've got like one session effectively or in, in the digital domain, you've got one, uh, unless you've got two computers where you can cross fade between while you load up a different patch, which is an option, um, you're sort of limited to one workspace and your 
computer CPU, which, you know, in my case is actually pretty good, but even so, um, these are the limitations of using VCV Live, I think. So, this is an option to completely change the sounds. So like this little sign VCO, for example, if I just solo that, it's playing this sequence. Let's turn it up a bit. It's playing this sequence. It's got a delay on it. It's very fast. It's a pretty cool sequence. Um, but then if I crossfade, it turns into this. And it becomes more of a bass tone. I just think that's cool. I just think, I just love that crossfade, that sort of uh, morph from one to the other. I think that's one of the coolest things you can do in synthesis, really. And I always love it when synths, for example, have like a, a feature where you can just morph from one patch to another. Um, I always think that's just awesome. Um, and this is basically that, you know, obviously it took a while to set this up, but it would in any situation, I think. Um, so let's listen to some of these other ones. This is the wavetables. You may have noticed as well that the clock is changing because I'm also modulating the BPM, which does dramatically change the mood, you know. And this one, they're playing the same sequence, but the speed and the rhythm of it is changing when I crossfade because of these Euclidean sequences. But then also the de de uh, decay of the notes is opening up, so you get more of the the harmonics and the, and the uh, the pitch. Whereas when it's really short, it's barely pitched. I mean, it, it is, but it's very subtle, especially when it's blending with everything else. And then I've got here this uh, really interesting physical modeling oscillator called Water Table which when we morph again changes completely so anyway I just kind of wanted to demonstrate that uh, in a fun way and so I built this patch to do that let's have a listen to the drums real quick pretty basic little drum beat down here And just with the aid of a filter and some wave shaping, we get a completely different sound. And obviously the tempo changes as well. I also change the pitch of some things and also the bit rate of the, uh, the little modules down there from Proc. And then the other thing that's cool is it's not just one side or the other. What if I go like halfway between? Completely different sound. Or over here. So there's like a lot of... Uh, <laughs> a lot of interesting stuff in the intervening space between the two sides of the crossfade. So yeah, that's kind of it. It's a pretty short video today, but I just wanted to talk about that because this is a lot of fun. Um, and I just, I don't know, I just like this technique. So, yeah, um, let me know what you think, of course, as always. And uh, yeah, please comment, like, subscribe. All that fun, uh, annoying YouTube, social media bullshit stuff. <laughs> um, and you can see my face this time. I'm probably going to keep my face in these videos, even if I forget that the camera's there, just because, why not, you know? So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed. 
this little experiment. And uh, I'll see you next time.